Dracula, Chapter 3. The next day, Jonathan went to the library room. He began to write in his diary. He used a special code. He did not want the Count to understand what he wrote. I am afraid, wrote Jonathan, afraid that I am going crazy. I cannot believe my eyes anymore. Last night I was standing at my window. It was very late. A dark shape came down the castle wall. At first I could not tell what it was. Then I saw it was the Count. He was crawling down the castle. Head first, like a giant spider. He crawled all the way down to the ground, and then he disappeared. Did I really see this? Or am I losing my mind? Jonathan closed his diary. He felt scared, mixed up. This is like a bad dream, he thought. He put his head down on the table and cried. Then he fell asleep. The library grew dark. Jonathan woke. He was so tired and sleepy that he could not move. He heard a whisper, a woman's voice. Then he heard another woman answering, and then a third. Let me have him, said one voice. No, it's my turn, said another. Jonathan saw three women coming toward him. Their faces were white. Their eyes were red. He has enough blood for all of us said the third woman. She leaned over Jonathan. He wanted to push her away, but somehow he could not. I will go first, she said. She licked her lips. Then Jonathan felt her sharp teeth on his neck. Suddenly he heard an angry shout. It was the Count. Leave him, cried the Count. He belongs to me. I have told you, this man is mine. The women backed away. But what about us? they asked. Are we to have nothing? You can have him tomorrow, when I am finished with him, said the Count. Now leave. Jonathan heard the Count's words and blacked out. When he woke, it was morning. He was in bed. Jonathan sat up. He remembered the three women and the Count, and he knew he had to get out of Castle Dracula right away, or he would be a dead man. Jonathan left his room. He began searching for a way out of the castle. He moved quickly. He knew the Count would be back that night. First, Jonathan tried all the doors. Then he went up and down the hallways. No luck. He turned a new corner and saw some steps. Could this be the way out? Jonathan climbed down and down. He came to a room deep under the ground. The air was cold and damp. Bats flew above him in the dark. He lit a candle. The room was full of long wooden boxes. Were they coffins for dead people? Then Jonathan saw that the boxes had earth in them. The earth was from the floor of the room. He looked at each of the boxes more closely. Each one had a label. To Count Dracula, Carfax Abbey, London, England. Then Jonathan saw four of the boxes in a row. He looked inside. There were the three women, each one in a box. Their eyes were open, but they did not move when Jonathan came near. Are they asleep, he wondered, or dead? Jonathan came to the fourth box. Inside lay the Count. His eyes were open. There was blood on his lips. Ugh! Jonathan drew back. He began to think hard. The Count had bought a house in London, Carfax Abbey. He was going to send the boxes there, boxes just like the one he was resting in. Would these boxes hold creatures like the evil Count, like the three women, evil creatures that drank blood? No, screamed Jonathan. I will not let it happen. He picked up a shovel. He raised it high over his head. He hit the Count as hard as he could, but Dracula only smiled. 
Jonathan dropped the shovel and ran up the winding steps, back to his room, to the open window. It was the only way out. If I fall, I will die, he thought, but even death is better than being Dracula's prisoner. Jonathan crawled out the window. He hung on to the ledge. He felt for a place to rest his foot, a stone, a crack, anything. Then he found a a, a crack and another. Inch by inch, Jonathan climbed down the castle wall, slowly and with great care, for now there was only one thing on his mind. He had to get back to England. Somehow, Dracula had to be stopped.